Hello and welcome to Wedding Wednesdays with Weddings Online. My name is Kelly and I'm a former wedding planner and blogger and I'm obsessed with weddings. If you're planning a wedding in Ireland, you're in the right place. You're going to learn the tried and tested methods to planning your dream wedding without the added stress. Think of this as your one-stop shop for everything to do with planning your wedding in Ireland. With me, your new wedding planning bestie and a cup of tea. This is Wedding Wednesdays with Weddings Online. If you have ever had a question about wedding ceremonies in Ireland, then you're in the right place. We are actually going into part two of a three-part series all about wedding ceremonies. In fact, I've got some amazing questions. They are common questions that you have about wedding ceremonies. And I have some really amazing experts. They are guest experts who are joining me on the show to answer the questions. These are people who create wedding ceremonies for a living. They are the pros. They know their stuff. And so today we have five amazing questions and five equally amazing um, guests who are going to help answer them. These are the questions that we are covering in today's episode. What are some simple ways to personalize my wedding ceremony? Are there any special ways to include my children in my ceremony? How can we include guests? And what about guests that are too shy to do something like a reading? How many songs do we need in our ceremony? And the final question, are there any special ways to incorporate my Irish tradition into my ceremony? So as you can tell, today we're talking all about wedding ceremony content. In the previous episode, we covered some really um, like kind of general questions about ceremonies. And um, one of the questions was about how long a wedding ceremony is. And we had a really amazing answer to the question, which is that actually, instead of thinking about um, how long things should be, think about what you want in your ceremony and then work from there. And so um, to help you work out what you want in your ceremony, these questions and the answers are going to give you some of the pieces of the puzzle. Um, And then in next week's episode, we're looking at all the legal side of things. Um, You know, is there anything you have to do in your ceremony for it to be legal? Um, You know, where do you get started? Who do you go to? you know, when you first start thinking about getting married, all of those kind of things that will be addressed in next week's episode. But let's get started um, with question number one, all about wedding ceremony content. And the question is, what are some simple ways to personalize my wedding ceremony? And I have um, Maeve Boyle, who's giving us the inside scoop. Let's see what she had to say. Hi there, Maeve Boyle from Soulful Ceremonies here. Thanks for having me on. When it comes to personalizing your wedding ceremony, there's lots of directions that you can go in. But the most important thing, key to it, is being honest. Being honest with yourselves, with each other, and with your celebrant about what you do and don't like, about what's most important to you. So is it to be somewhat religious or spiritual? Do you want it to be really romantic or playful? Sometimes it's a balance of all of those. When it comes to the elements included, you're going to be looking at things like readings, music, uh, maybe rituals like hand fasting or sand ceremonies, uh, lighting of candles. And with all of those, again, it's about having a conversation about why you're including them, who you're including. Is it friends, family, maybe children or your dogs, big favorite with me, be it, you know, by pictures or in person. So letting your celebrant know a bit more about your life, you know, your personal interests or their cultural influences you want to consider um, or hobbies. Some people have sung to each other. Um, And yeah, it is really about being a bit curious and being open to exploring and having those conversations, um, but never include anything that makes you kind of cringy or uncomfortable. You might want to personalize your vows and celebrants can always help you with that if you do, but just being honest to the things that you do like um, and to your story as two people, as a couple together, will bring you to a beautiful personalized ceremony. And most of all, really try and enjoy it. Well, let's move on to question number two, which is, are there any special ways to include my children in my ceremony? And we have Catherine O'Connor, who's going to tell us a little bit more about that. Hello, it's Catherine here from Ceremonies by Catherine. And there are lots of lovely ways to include your children in your ceremony. From reading a poem to potentially lighting the single candles on a unity candle spread if they're 
of a certain age. You can have them do the ring warming. They can participate in the Celtic hand fasting by either having their hands tied with your hands or simply bringing ribbons up that represent them as individuals. A lovely option is to do a sand ceremony with everyone involved in the family. So everyone picks a coloured sand and they mix the sand together. A nice one to do with younger children is at the end of the ceremony, when you are pronounced married, little bells can be given to the children for them to ring the bells or bubbles. They can blow bubbles at the very end. So there's lots of lovely little ways to include them. And it depends on their age, really. But it's really lovely to give them their own little job to do because then they feel quite special. I hope everyone enjoys their wedding planning. Bye. So off the back of that question, we have another question, which is how can we include guests in our ceremony? And what about those who are too shy to do a reading? So some of the ideas that Catherine shared could be things that you might want to do with your guests. And some of the things that are going to be answered in our next question could be something you could get your children to do if they are too shy to do, you know, things like lighting a candle or reading a poem or something like that. So Pat Clark Brown answered the question and um, got some really creative answers. So have a listen to this. Hi, this is Pat Clark Brown. I'm a celebrant with the Humanist Association of Ireland. One of the advantages of a celebrant-led ceremony is that it gives you the opportunity to include your guests in several different ways. This can include fun options like swapping beer men for page boys to distribute beer and shots in advance of the wedding party, a role suitable for your more outgoing friends. Some more traditional options would be doing a poem or reading or lighting the unity candles where family members are not available. If you're doing a Celtic hand fasting, a nice option I had at a recent wedding is where before the ceremony, guests were given a ribbon and then they are introduced during the ceremony and the symbolism of that ribbon colour is explained as they drape it over the couple's hands. These options are nice for people who are shy, as no speaking is involved. Ring bearer and the tying of the ribbons would normally be the role of the wedding party, but where there is none or the wedding party is smaller, this role can be allocated to other guests without any issues. There are lots of other ceremony elements where we can get friends and family involved, like bringing up the sand or soil for a sand ceremony or a tree planting, distributing little chocolates as part of a larger chocolate ceremony to celebrate the sweet and bitter things the couple may face, or even small bottles if the couple are going to take a shot before they tie the knot. It is always up to the couple to decide what works for them and their friends, and it's the celebrant's role to guide them to ensure that they get their day their way. Well, when you're thinking about your wedding ceremony, you might also be thinking about the music. And I've always wondered, you know, do you have to have certain songs? How many do you need? And so Rebecca Kemp is going to answer the question for us, which is how many songs do we need in our ceremony? Hi, my name is Rebecca Kemp from Celebrancy by Rebecca. The number of songs you need during a ceremony is two, which is the entrance music and the ex exit music which are usually two different pieces of music and couples tend to opt for a slower more formal piece of music for the entrance and a more celebratory upbeat piece of music for the exit but it's entirely up to you. Other points in the ceremony where you can choose to have music are any time where there isn't much talking or much going on um, from a, a speech perspective. So if you're having a ritual, for example, like um, a sand pouring or bringing items up to a memory box um, that lasts more than about 30 seconds or a minute, it's nice to have music playing quietly in the background. If you're having a certificate signing, have music playing quietly in the background then too. Another point where it's nice to have music is uh, before the ceremony. So before the ceremony even starts and your guests are coming into the ceremony space or the, the venue, it's nice to have a bit of music playing then. But feel free to discuss options with your officiant or your celebrant who will advise you um, when and where you might need music other than the entrance and the exit. And also, of course, with the person who is playing the music for you if you're having live music, um, but otherwise your celebrant um, will advise you. 
Well, our final question for today is for anybody who's looking to incorporate a little bit of their Irish roots into the wedding ceremony. I had a chat with Lisa O'Brien, who's given us some really creative ideas and some things that maybe you didn't even realize were rooted in Irish tradition. So have a listen to what she has to say. Hi, this is Lisa O'Brien from Celebrant Lisa, and I'm delighted to be the current Weddings Online Wedding Celebrant of the Year 2024. We have a wealth of Irish tradition when it comes to ceremony in Ireland, and there are so many ways that we can incorporate some Irishness into the ceremony. Now, one of the most obvious ways is the hand fasting, and this is uh, a tradition that dates back to Brehan Law, where the couple's hands are bound together with cord. And it is a physical binding as well as a spiritual binding of the couple. And there's beautiful words of blessing said while the cord is wrapped and then a knot is formed. And this is where we get the term tying the knot. And a knot, like a good marriage, gets stronger under pressure. Another tradition we can incorporate is the tradition of um, the ring warming. And the ring warming is where the couple's weddings ring, wedding rings are passed among their guests and each guest is asked to hold their rings and make a silent wish or prayer or blessing for the couple and for their future. Therefore, warming the rings with their well wishes before passing them on to the person beside them. It's a great way to get everybody in, everybody incorporated into to the ceremony without actually showing a lot of limelight on any one person for those who are a little bit shy. Now, I'll give you one more, and that is the Oathing Stone. This is a lovely old tradition and it comes from a time in history before we had wedding rings and the couple either holds or puts their hands on a stone as they repeat their wedding vows. Therefore they're casting their vows and casting and setting their promises in stone and it's where we get the term set in stone and um, we think that maybe the term you are my rock or having a rock solid relationship comes from this old tradition. So there's a little few traditions that you can incorporate. There's loads more on my website, celebrantlisa.ie. I have a whole page there on all the other traditions that you could possibly use to make your ceremony a little more Irish. Well, that is it for today's episode, all about wedding ceremonies and content, how you can include people. Next week, we're looking at all the legal things. So these are the questions we're going to answer next week. When should I begin the process with the HSE? How do I go about making sure that the legalities are carried out correctly? What will happen at my intent to marry appointment? Do you have to register your intent to marry in the county you intend to get married in? And are there any restrictions when it comes to civil ceremonies? So you don't want to miss that episode that's coming out next week. This is the final episode in this three-part series about wedding ceremonies. But thank you for listening today. The Winning Wednesdays with Weddings Online podcast is produced by me, Kelly, and mixed, mastered, and edited by Glenn Hartman. For more wedding planning tips, advice, checklists, and more, visit weddingsonline.ie.